what's up everyone? Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use the geospatial controls in the map component to create interactive maps and add those into your Power Apps Canvas apps. I'll touch on some of the other options for mapping, what this particular mapping control can do, and of course walk you through a demo of how to set it up and some of the ins and outs of the different properties that we can configure. So stick around and I'll show you how it's done. The mapping capability that I'm going to be walking you through today is this new map control for our Canvas Power Apps. So you can see that I'm using it here and I have a few different map points plotted. We can add this new map capability by going to insert and it's under the media section here. And if we scroll down, we have this map control. Now you will see, so before I even dive into the ins and out, you'll see that diamond icon next to the map control. That lets us know that this is a premium feature for Power Apps. So we will have to have some kind of paid Power Apps licensing, whether it's per user or per app license. So there's the first caveat and why I said I would touch on other mapping options. So I do have a blog post that is a little bit old now, but it is still relevant. So back in 2019, I did show how we could do an alternate method. This was before we had this new map control, but we could use the Bing Maps connector and have plot points in that as well. So we would just have to sign up for the Bing Maps API, put in an API key, and I walk you through the ins and outs of getting this capability set up if you want to use this Bing Map approach instead, because it doesn't require any premium licensing. But I think you'll find if you do have the licensing that this new map control is really easy to use and pretty powerful. So to demo this, I've actually incorporated a new map section into my desk reservation power app template that I have available on the Microsoft 365 Power Platform samples repo, which I'll put a link to in the video description. Now, as I said before, I simply went into the insert tab, selected media, and then selected this map control. Now I've done a lot of configuration on this particular map control. So let's actually go and create a new screen so you can see what it looks like out of the box when you drop this inside of your Power App. So if we add a new map control here, you'll see the first thing that we get prompted for is to bind it to a data source. Because the intention here is we're almost using this map like a gallery to plot different locations. So as you'll see, I already have a few different SharePoint lists in my case bound to this application. And one of these lists is office locations. So if I go to my data sources and let's open up this office locations list, we can see my configuration. And as you can tell, it's very simple. I'm just reusing the title field to store the name of the office location. And then I have this multi line of text column called address where I'm putting in the full address. So there are two main ways that we can pass in our locations inside of this map. We can put in the full address, or we can also put in longitude and latitude coordinates if we'd like. So either one will work, but I'm just keeping it simple rather than having to look up longitude and latitude and using the full address in a multi-line of text field. And I've also included a phone number because one of the things you'll see is we can have an additional kind of pop-up tooltip like panel to show additional information about the location. So I might want to surface up the phone number in that case. So that's all we have on the back end. Now let's go back to our app and we'll see how to bind this map control to our office locations list. So with this map control selected, I'm going to change this locations lookup items here. And I'll select the drop down and we'll choose our office locations list. So when I do that, you see that the visual changed. So the background kind of went away, it's blue. And all I'm seeing right now is a circle with five. Well, why are we seeing that? Well, if we go back to our list, we have five different locations. So I know that it is bound correctly to my list, but it's not showing the data in a way that I'd like. So when you think about when we look at maps and any other application or site you've used, it usually has the context of your current location, and then it will show the different plot points around where you are. So I want to mimic that similar functionality in this map. So there are a few properties on this map control that I want to tweak to get that. If we select our map control and we look at the properties panel on the right, the first thing that I want to do is disable this default option that you're seeing here called cluster pins. That's what's causing this to show the circle in five. So my locations are all relatively near each other. So in that instance, if we have cluster pins on, any locations that are close in proximity to each other, it will show as one cluster with a number next to the locations. 
So I don't want that. I want to show them all separately. So I'm going to turn that function off. Now, the other problem is this map isn't really helpful. Even if I preview the app, you see it's kind of pointing me in the middle of the ocean in Africa. Well, I'm not based in Africa. I'm here in the United States. So we need to fix that. And also if we kind of look around at the map, we see that it's not getting our locations correctly because all of my locations are based in the US as well. So something's going on here, which means we need to configure a few additional properties. So let's address how we get it to pinpoint in on our general location. So the user running the application, how do we get their location and make that the default that shows on the map? Well, if we look on our properties for this particular map control, we'll see that one of the things we have is show current location and it's a toggle which is set to off. So if we turn that on, you see the map changes and we have two additional fields we need to fill in. So we have current location latitude and current location longitude. So to set those, I'm actually gonna go over to our properties drop down in the upper left-hand corner, and I'm going to find the property for current location latitude. So here, instead of having it be zero, I want to dynamically put in the current user's location latitude. I can do that with a function called location. So I can simply type in location, do a dot, and you can see all the things that we can get about the current user's location, which is just the latitude, longitude, and even altitude. So I'll point this to latitude, and then I'll go and I'll do the same to that other property that we see here in the properties dropdown of current location longitude. So I'll point that to location.longitude. So that's one piece of the puzzle. The next thing you wanna do is configure this use default location. So you wanna to toggle that from off to on. And now the show current location is going to do that flashy circle that you'll see, which kind of pinpoints on a map your current location. But the use default location is actually going to change where the map is positioned based off of your current location. So that's the difference between these two. Now we need to do the same thing here once we enable that use default location to set it to the current user's default location. We want to go back to that properties dropdown. And this time we'll choose the default latitude and we'll change that from its hard coded value to our location.latitude. And then the same for the default longitude. We'll point that to location.longitude. Now you'll notice that it's still kind of showing the location in the middle of the ocean for me, which obviously is not correct. Unfortunately, I'm not on a cruise ship right now. So the reason it's doing that is based on your browser. So to get the location, it has to be able to read your location in whatever browser you're in. So a lot of people might have that capability turned off by default to read your current location. So you'll have to make sure when you're testing this and also if you're using this, that you have the ability and you're passing that on to your app to get your current location. So what I'll do is we'll save this app and I'm actually in Microsoft Edge right now so I can tell from this icon here in my browser address bar that I'm blocking the access of my location. So what I'll do is I'll click on that and I'll open my preferences. So now I'm allowing that location to be read, but it's still showing me in the ocean. So one of the things I've noticed is if you don't have that on and you're in edit mode here, it doesn't always catch up. So I'll usually just make sure I save my changes. I'll close out of my application and we'll go back into edit mode and it should resolve itself. So now if we go back to the same screen after I've allowed the browser to view my location, close the app and reopen it, we see that it's pointing to the right location or at least it's not showing us in the ocean. So if I were to scroll out, we can see that, yep, there I am. I'm in the Tulsa area in Oklahoma and that's pinpointing my location on the map correctly. So we're getting there, that's a great start. Now it's still not showing our plot points. So what's going on there and how can we fix that? That's the next big piece of the puzzle here. We're gonna click on our map again and we know we have it bound to our office locations list, which is correct, but we're not telling it where to read the addresses from. So we have to configure a different property for that. So we're going to go into our properties dropdown in the upper left-hand corner. And we're going to select this item addresses property. So in here, it just expects a column in your data source that you're bound to that contains the address. Now this column name needs to be in double quotes. So I remove the empty double quotes that are there and I'll type a new double quote and it should use the IntelliSense and auto-populate that with all the different columns that you have in your bound list. So the one I want if I scroll through this list is our address column. 
Now that I have that and the map actually knows where it's getting the address location from, if I were to play this again and scroll out a bit, you should start to see some plot points get added. So now I can easily see here I am on the map with that flashing dot and the nearest location to me would be this one here. And if I scroll out even more, we'll start to see some of the additional locations that I have in my list. And as I mentioned earlier, this map control takes either addresses or longitude and latitude. So I could go in back into my properties pane and you see there's properties for items latitudes and items longitude. So if you're using those values instead, you'd simply point those values to the corresponding columns in your data source. All right, so, so far we've been able to bind this to a list, get the map points plotted and have it center into our current location. So now let's take a look at some of the other pieces of functionality that this map component gives us that we can configure. The first one is the style of map. So right now, this is kind of the classic map view that we're seeing here, very flat, but we can change it if we look at this map style property in the right-hand side from the road style into a satellite style. So if you wanted more of that kind of aerial satellite view, we can do that with this map control as well. Now this style doesn't give us any road indicators, so that may or may not be good depending on what you're wanting to do with your particular use case. So that's one option, but you do have another option for satellite road labels. So if you want the mixture of that satellite view, but still maintain those road labels, this would be the view for you. So you can kind of look through that list that dropped down and pick the best view for what you're wanting to do. But I tend to like the satellite view quite a bit. Now, the other thing you'll notice about the map control here is the different controls we have within the map. Now, obviously like any good map, we have to be able to zoom in and zoom out. So we have controls for that. But you see, we have two other controls as well. Starting with this one on the bottom, this is what's called the pitch control. So when we click that, you see we have up and down arrows. So if I, for example, click this up arrow, you see it's changing the pitch of the map for me. So another really common feature in most maps that we're used to using. And then the other one that we have at the top is our compass control. So this allows us to change the orientation of the map. So we can go left, right, and change the orientation of which way the map is facing. So if you want to keep your map fairly static and only allow zooming in, zooming out, we can actually disable the compass and the pitch controls. So let me show you how to do that real quick. We'll go back to our map and on the right hand side, we have two simple toggle buttons. And we'll look at the compass control, for example, we can toggle that to off and that will hide the compass capability. And then the same thing for pitch control, we can toggle that to off and that will change the pitch capability. And we can even disable the zoom if we'd like. So if we just want to show a static map for some reason, then we can disable that zoom control. So I'm going to toggle that back on though, because I do want that capability to zoom and actually I'm going to toggle in the pitch control as well. Now if we scroll down this list on the properties pane a bit more, I'm gonna show you a couple more things. Next thing we wanna look at is the info cards. So this option here you see is defaulted to none, but we have two options we can configure. We can either set this to on click or on hover. So this gives us the capability when we either hover over one of these pins on our map or we click on one, we can show a different information in a card format. So for example, if I do the on hover, now if I hover over the Tulsa location, we see that it gives me this simple card of all of the different columns that I have in my list, showing me the name of the office, the address, and the phone number. So that's if we want this to show when we hover, or I could toggle the same property to on click so that nothing happens when we hover, but when we click on one of these pinpoints, it shows that pop-up card details. So you might be wondering where can I transform or configure the details that show here? Well, the fields that show are configurable here under the field section. So if we edit that, you can see it automatically pulled in all of my fields, but I might not want this icon to show. So I could go in and simply remove that from that view. Next thing you're probably wondering is, can we change the styling of this pop-up card? And at the moment, I don't believe that is possible. You're limited to only being able to configure which particular fields show. Um, so it's gonna show in this table-like format, no matter what you do. We do have control, however, over these pin colors. So it's using that standard Power Apps blue color that we get defaulted. We can choose this pin color option and click on that and use any of the out of the box colors from the color picker we have here, or of course, click on the custom tab and hard code in any hex code that we have. So I'll change mine to this kind of bright purple color. 
So right now these pinpoints aren't really giving me any context of what this location is. So one of the things that we can do is make labels show for the individual pins. So this is again another property that we can configure. So if we look at this properties pane, we have one called show shape labels that is turned on by default. So what we can do is go back to our properties dropdown and one of the properties we have is shape labels. So it's another one of these properties where we'll use the double quotes and we'll point it to a column that contains the label. So the column I wanna use is our title column because that contains the office name. And everything we've done so far brings us to what you're seeing here on my new select location screen in my desk reservation app. So it gives us an interactive map using that satellite view which has our location pinpoints with the office name next to it. So right now, this is really doing everything that I personally needed to do. So the use case I wanted to stick to today just to keep this video relatively short and sweet is how we can use it to plot different points on a map and be able to select those points and act on them. So that's the last piece of the puzzle to me because in the overall process, this fits into my desk reservation app. So I wanna be able to come in here, book a desk for a particular date, and be able to look at my map, find the office location nearest me, which I can easily do because I can see where I'm at relative to say this Northeast Oklahoma office is the closest. I need to be able to click this particular location and have it recognize what location I click and then filter another gallery on the next screen of selected desk that match that location. So you might notice when I clicked on that pin, I have a message popped up above that that says you selected the Northeast Oklahoma office. So let me show you how I was able to get the context of which pin was selected. When we select our map control and go to that properties dropdown in the upper left hand corner, you'll see there's a property for on shape selected. So this gives us the ability to put in some logic when a particular pin is selected. So I'm using a set command to set a global variable because I do want to pass this to different screens. And I'm going to set a variable called var office selected. And I'm going to set that to map one, which is the name of our map control that we've added. We're going to do dot selected. And this dot selected will give us all the properties to use about this selected location. So if I do another dot after selected, you can see that I could target it to just get the address, the ID, the title, longitude, latitude, whatever I needed. But I want to be able to access all the properties, so that's why I'm pointing it to just dot selected. And then on my label, I simply set that to hard code some text and then pull in that variable we just set and get the title. So now all there was left for me to do is on my continue button, I'm going to check if that office location variable is blank or not. If it is, I wanna show a message to the user letting them know that they can continue past the screen until they choose a location from the map. So I'm gonna do that with a function called notify. I'm gonna pass in a hard coded message. But if it isn't blank, meaning they have selected a location, then I'm going to navigate to a different screen called Desk Select. So with that, since we do have an office selected, we should be able to click Continue, have that take us here to the next screen and see filter list of the different desks that we have for that given location. So there's a quick intro to the map control. This is just one of the geospatial features that are available in our Canvas applications. If we select our input button here, you'll see that we also have this address input option. This is also using that geospatial functionality to be able to give us an input field where we can type in an address and it will actually go and look up and find and resolve that address for you. So this might be used in combination with the map control that I just showed for use cases where you want to be able to put in addresses and dynamically populate, say, a list of different locations and have that show on your map. So drop it down in the comments and let me know what you think about this geospatial functionality and if you want me to do any more videos on it. Do me a favor if you found this helpful, please hit that thumbs up button, give it a like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.